Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the uh, curing of concrete. The curing is very important for the strength of the concrete. So we should know that what are the requirements for the good curing of concrete. The curing of concrete can be defined as is defined as the providing sufficient moisture, temperature and time to allow the concrete to achieve the desired properties of the concrete. It means that it is the combination of three different requirement. One is the moisture content in the concrete, the temperature and time. So we should be careful about these three different requirements to a good curing for the concrete. Now I will try to explain this concept with the help of example. Let's consider that this is my simply supported beam and I put the concrete into this beam. Right? So after the removing the former from this beam and pouring the concrete, after one day we will have the beam but there are some requirements to have good strength for this beam actually there is a hydration reaction occurring inside the beam during the first few days and it's more fast during the first week of the beam so what we do we pour the water on the surface of this beam on the surface of this beam on each day why because we don't allow the water to move outside from this beam Actually, when we, don't, when we don't provide the water on the surface of this beam, the water from inside of the beam will try to evaporate from this beam from the inside of this beam. There is evaporation of water. And we want that we don't, and we want that this water should not evaporate from the inside of the beam. Because it is required for the, for the hydration process to occur inside the beam. And it's very important for the strength of the concrete. So during the hydration reaction, the single particle in the water reacts with one another and it's, uh, and it's increased the beam strength. So that's why we pour the water on each day on the surface of the beam so that it's moisture throughout. So the beam is moisture on this, uh, on over the surface and it doesn't allow the water to move from inside, to operate from inside of the beam. So this was the main purpose of the curing, that we make our beam to be in moisture state. This beam now will be in moisture state if you provide the water from outside on along the all surfaces. You can see the picture here where the person is giving water to the surface. It is for the uh, so that our member can be uh, purely moisture in moisture state so that it doesn't evaporate the water from the inside of the beam or inside of the column or slate. So it's very really important for the strength of the concrete. And the other things, some of the important things I want to share is that the, for the moisture, we should have at least of 80% humidity for the any structure member. 80% humidity. It may be for beam, for column, or for slab. So we should have 80% humidity so that the reaction occurring in the beam or slab should be good enough. The second one is the temperature. We should have at least 50 Fahrenheit or 10 centigrade temperature. It should be higher than this but not less than this. We should have 12, 15 or 20 but it should not be less than the 10 centigrade. There are also requirements on the high temperature but we cannot control it. But our minimum temperature should be 10 or 50. The other thing is that the curing should must be done for 3 to 14 days depending upon your desired project, which type of project it is. So this is the curing period. This was all about the cooling of concrete, which is very, really, which is very really important for the strength of the concrete. Uh, so, hope you guys understand, and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.